All right, welcome everybody uh, to our Tuesday morning uh, Second Amendment content creating coaching platform. Tuesday content creator. Morning. Oops. Second Amendment content. Content creation coaching uh, show. I don't know what this is. Uh, session. What do content we call this? Creation coaching. Uh, What's going on? How many things do I have open? Um, we go live on Tuesdays and we bring in Clover from. Uh, Gun Tuber Academy, thanks for jumping in. Hey, good to be here. It's, uh, it's an important one today, so hopefully some good conversation out of this. So let's see, we, we talk about content creation. We've been doing this for over a year, I believe. And while we focus on the struggles and the specific issues that we have in the gun community or the Second Amendment awareness community, uh, we also have just the issues that any content creator is going to have. And uh, since we've chatted a bit about SHOT Show and then it evolved into just a conversation about content creation in general, and then a bunch of people show up and join us live. So uh, we've had you know, an opportunity to answer questions, kind of get to know who all is out there. Uh, this couple, last couple of weeks, this part five of a series, what we've been doing is taking a break from the introductions and the beginner level and the uh, orientation type of stuff. And we're talking about uh, advanced and intermediate uh, discussions on these, on, you know, the, the topics are the same topics, but we're taking a look at a more intermediate view of them. And uh, this part five in the series is mental health and lifestyle. So, uh, we've got what the uh, robot kind of gives us as a structure for the show. We could put some uh, parameters into the AI and it gave us a, a structure for this series. And we're, uh, we've got the general avoid burnout, work-life balance, and imposter syndrome to go with. But as I uh, knew this was going to be an interesting one, and we typically run an hour and 90 minutes on this chat, on this conversation, uh, I added... Uh, or I asked a couple of more things and have some more resources here, some more things to touch on. So with uh, that being said, welcome everybody who's joining us live. We'll say, hey, as people join in, the only way we know you're here is if you say, hey, but uh, Clover, when we talk about mental health and, uh, what was it? Mental health and lifestyle in regards to content creation in 2023, where, what comes to mind? Where do you, th where do you, where do you start with that? Well, I think the realization that, and this goes, a lot of this may even go beyond the content creator side of things as we have this conversation, but, you know, the, the point is, I mean, if we, we have to take care of ourselves uh, quite often, you know, as creators, we're, we're thinking about getting the content out there, the content that other people consume and do other people like the content and, you know, is it beneficial? Is it offering a value proposition to those people? All the things of content creation that we talk about. Um, but you know, it's kind of hard to create content if we're not in the right frame of mind, we're not in the right space and, and that sort of thing. So it, it goes back to that old adage that we have to put ourselves first. And that sounds selfish to say, but you know, if we're not taking care of ourselves, look at, you know, look at it from a, from a, a dire medical emergency style situation, right? Um, you can be the greatest doctor, nurse, EMT on the planet. Uh, and if you're in need of dire medical attention, right, if you're not taking care of a purse, who are you going to help, right, because you're in that type of uh, a position. So um, we got to be a little selfish, especially when it comes to this topic and, and make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. Hopefully we, we talk about some ways, different ways we can do that, different ways that we can stave off or head off um, specific issues to start with, Um you know, and as opposed to lifestyle, I kind of like the idea you threw lifestyle in there because lifestyle can be like a precursor thing. So, you know, especially with the ebbs and the flows and the ups and the downs of content creation and the revenue coming in and, and certain levels, I guess, of fame, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, recognition, maybe a better one, that uh, that comes into the mix. Uh, you know, those sorts of things certainly have a direct impact, impact on our uh, on our mental health and our mental well-being. Um, so, you know, that probably lifestyle is, is probably something that 
Um, you know, my opinion, I mean, that's something that needs to remain consistent. But hopefully when we get into that, people can start thinking about that and how that can, uh, again, be the precursor or kind of lead into the potential of having some uh, stress and anxiety and, and other types of uh, mental health issues. So great topic and uh, looking forward to diving in here. Right on. So uh, I took in a couple of good places there. I think, uh, you know, as you were saying that, I was thinking, you know, if you're that medical person and you have uh, some kind of uh, issue with the spouse, good or bad, you know, just an amazing news with the spouse, you know, maybe a new kid's coming or something or, you know, just some amazing news or some horrible news. And then you go to work and now you're, you know, in a situation where your mind's drifting you're you know you're you're constantly thinking back to whatever that you know your other important thing is happening in your world is that your best is that a day to call in sick you know is that a day not to be where you need to be present in your in your job so there's there's that right and that's an extreme example but i think uh, if we relate that to firearm stuff a realistic one with firearms um i've been going to shot shows since 2005 and have never done that alone. I've always had friends with, I've always been part of uh, other bigger groups or, you know, the, my friends at the gun shops that were going and, you know, had things to do and uh, had big brothers, so to speak, to, to follow. So I knew, you know, I, I knew what the, the deal was. I was never there alone in all those years. But uh, in all those years, I've also, it's not been, except for Joe, there's been very few people that have been going all that long that that consistently over the, those years so i've seen plenty of people and plenty of different things over the years and i know that you haven't dealt with this uh as much as or at all compared to some people but it can be a stressor to leave everything behind uh for almost a week a week depending on how, how long you go yep. and what's perceived as a vacation and it costs as much as a vacation for sure, especially if you're going at the beginning of your project or in a way that you're not making money and you're not getting paid to be there. Then it definitely is perceived as a vacation by everybody, your kids, your wife, your, your work, uh, your parents, you know, whoever it is that's paying attention to what you're doing and what you could be doing. Right. So it can be pretty stressful being at a place if you right. haven't set the stage, if you haven't included everybody if you haven't created that healthy lifestyle or you know that is that the way to say it healthy lifestyle like i'm afraid yeah. to say healthy because of some other project we're working on i'm afraid to ever say that word so i've kind of like <laughs> like trained myself not to say it but i think i'm allowed to say it over here um but you know creating a, an environment of whatever and, and in that case you know i'm using a family thing but it could be a work thing it could be a financial thing i'm more of a financial thing i do stupid things financially and you know i've been paying the price on that now for a number of years uh just in other words putting too much stuff on credit cards and you know having to pay it off now and it's not it turns out it's not easy to pay credit cards because they keep charging you interest it's almost like you're swimming just to stay afloat you know you're not going anywhere you're just trying to stay on the surface but uh so there's lots of ways that you can create stressors right on your uh self or i guess on your situation on your project that are going to have it's going to have influence you know how can you do great editing when you're worried about how much that laptop costs how can you do great editing when you're worried about what you should be doing with that hour you know how can you be doing great editing when the roof's leaking or something when the uh, tires are bad you know and you could be mowing lawns or something well, it's not just that, but it's it's it can also be residual effects of things, right? Um, you brought up a couple of uh, brought up a couple of good points there. Uh, on, I think that first of all, I think that uh, communication, I think is is a good key because I think you're right. I think outside looking in, I think you know, if you're talking about that family dynamic, and I know I ran into this, so I can speak to some personal experience to where. You know, I mean, you're obviously having fun. You're going to these events and we have our support structures. We have our, you know, fellow creators, our colleagues, our friends that do the same thing. Uh, and there's a certain amount of hanging out. We go out to eat and this is a support structure where we run into each other in the hallways or you know, whatever the case may be, the media rooms. And so there's definitely that, definitely an element of fun. Work, work can also be fun, right? Um, and 
it, it if you got a situation to where especially your family is at home they're not a, really a part of what you're doing um but that can definitely be an issue and i've, I've actually experienced some of that uh now as my uh wife has made these events and dabbled into content creation and stuff herself with a few different projects and things like that she's come to understand my work ethic and that i take it seriously and that these are working trips yes we're going to have fun and, and that sort of stuff but you know at the end of the day it's all about to return it's it's a work uh related mindset right um to speak to the uh cost of the laptops like you're talking about the other things that can that can really get you into that get you into that rut um you know i think it's important to hold on to little things right and i don't want to say be overly optimistic and things like that but you know, look for the, the, the little tidbits of good and try to try to hold on to those. Um, you know, for a month plus, I was without a laptop to be able to edit. Uh, was that stressful? Yes. Did that create anxiety? Yes. Did, did I know I had things piling up that I weren't I wasn't able to do? Yes. Was the cost of, you know, getting a new laptop, figuring that situation out uh, problematic? Yes. Uh, but also, I looked at it. I had to turn around, and, and this is where the intermediate, the advanced comes into play, right? Is being um, educated, skilled, advanced, experienced, whatever, uh, with the, the uh, with the art of content creation, whatever the business of content creation, enough to to realize certain things. And one of the things that I realized was, wow, you know, does it suck that I'm without a laptop to edit right now? Yeah. Um, could it be worse? Absolutely. And the reason is we are in a lull time, or we're uh, kind of starting to creep out of it, but we're at a time, and the dog days of summer on YouTube, where views are low, engagement's low, like overall everything's low. So it's like, wow, it still sucks. It's still horrible. It's still a bad thing you have to deal with. Uh, but uh, it's, it's if it was going to happen, um, it almost could not happen. It could not have happened at a better time, let's just say, right? And so being able to recognize, I think, certain things like that uh, and legit realize that things aren't as bad as they could be. Um, and when you started talking there, there was another point, G, that, that wasn't related to the family aspect. Well, let me but, throw this at you since this might be a way to throw, give you a chance to think about it. But I was just yeah. thinking, as you said that, what if how often do people take a second in 2023, 2023? 23 years after the year 2000 flipped over the odometer in 2023 a lot of us were born in the 70s 80s 50s i guess well 50s even right the 2000s for sure and uh the 90s i guess right so uh how many people take a moment to think about what it would be like without the internet what would we be doing in 2023 if smartphones and internet never happened and we probably just had like a thousand cable channels, maybe, or, you know, it would be some number greater than what we had in the 90s. But, you know, just some more version of the 90s, some CD player that had more songs on it. But it's still a CD player, you know, some weird version of Back to the Future where it's essentially the 90s, just with more extreme versions of the shit they had in the 90s, you know, hoverboards, but still skateboards. So, uh, you know, do you ever think about like a different you know, way we could have done this. Like we we have access to stuff that think about the guys who are doing the people who are doing the uh, pamphlets and the brochures and the posters and the flyers that were published in the beginning of printing, which allowed this country to even become a thing because the idea of uh, individual liberty, uh, you know, you can have that word of mouth. You can get in front of a crowd and yell it. A bunch of times but back in the day if you yelled it in front of a group of people nobody recorded that you'd have to yell it again in front of another group of people and yell it again in front of another group of people and every time you found a group of people you have to yell that idea until that idea persisted well how can you do that well, you write it down right now you have the printing press and you have to be able to write that down and that's how this country even started is when you know the technology existed for us to have ideas like that uh and to move them around and people could you know, without having to write it on a piece of paper, they could have this published pamphlet or poster to, to disseminate the, the data around, right? 
in 2023, look at the tools we have and the, the things that we dabble in and what do we choose to dabble in and what could we be dabbling in? You know, the power that people have out there to, I don't know, some just, you know, think about whatever people are doing on YouTube and think about if they did that with some focus. So uh, I just think about that, kind of think backwards and forwards of, you know, what, what would the people back in the day have thought with the ability we've got today and what would we be doing without this ability? What we what we play with and what we get frustrated with is it's magic. It's beyond magic. Like, I don't even think they could comprehend the idea that, you know, with a, a, an Internet connection, which we pay a few bucks a month for a portion of our income, uh, we're able to uh, be in contact with the entire rest of the planet, which is also doing the same thing with just a portion of their income and some places get their Internet for free. And I mean, it's just crazy to think about, uh, you know, the where we're at and what we would have been, what the alternative to this would have been. Anyway, just a little thought. I don't know if there's a thing to say to that, but otherwise I'll give you a chance to think about what you're trying to say before. No, uh, no, that didn't spark anything. And I actually went back while you were doing that and tried to back up on the, <laughs> on the replay. And I don't know, but you, you'd made a point earlier. It's like, maybe we'll, we'll hit back on it here in a little bit, but there was two things I wanted to talk about earlier. And I, the second one I, I remembered, but the first one, I don't know. Yeah, uh, the was, robot has okay. us about uh, as far as the robot original concept came when it came up with seven part or whatever. Yeah, uh, thing for media content creation. It says avoiding burnout, on keeping the creative flame alive, work life balance, how to maintain healthy bodies when your hobby becomes your job. It's kind of an interesting thing. Imposter syndrome ways to cope with self doubt. I think these are three, and it must you know know. Oh wow. Uh, it's knowing what they know must think these are the three most you know typical things but there's certainly more than this but yeah go ahead sounds like you caught something there yeah we've um yeah i want to i would love to shift into the imposter syndrome thing for a little bit um <laughs> we deal with that a lot and the reason i say that is it, it, we've talked about burnout before on this uh, on this particular show matter of fact i know uh, some of these other things imposter syndrome so it thinks it's a real caliber okay go ahead. <laughs> right um so imposter syndrome, though, I don't think we've ever we've ever discussed that. And imposter syndrome is even though we have one of the things that I've heard you say for a very, very long time now is value your voice. Right. And uh, that goes into imposter syndrome. I think a lot of the people that that um, that do not value their voice, they don't get it in that sense. Um, that's a, that's certainly an element of imposter syndrome right now. I'm coming from a place that I don't know. I don't know that I've necessarily wrestled with imposter syndrome too much. Um, I almost inflate my own ego and have a big head. It's, it's usually in a self-deprecating way. Uh, but I'm pretty confident and comfortable at knowing where I stand at any given moment, uh, be that in a project, in life, in whatever. I think it's and, a point of view thing, if I can interrupt, because I think uh, yeah, people perspective. That, yeah. no, no, I mean, angle that you're coming at it, uh, yeah. you're coming at it with, uh, hey, here's the table. I'm sitting at the table. Come sit at the table. Oh, you're going to have a different conversation. Start your own table. I think there's a lot of people who are in the dynamic of there's the pulpit and I sit and I don't want to say pulpit that has connotation. Let's say there's the um, the, the speaker's uh, microphone. Cody. The yeah. podium. Thank you. There's the podium. I sit here in the audience. The person who has the authority stands at the podium and dictates or presents or tells us, entertains us or educates us or inform, you know, demands from us. But the podium is the knowledge and we're the other people. Right. And then there's the, those of us who go, here's a table where we all have a seat. Come join us at the table. Oh, your conversation is bigger than ours. Go start your own table and have that conversation larger than this one. But thank you for playing. Like, okay, thanks right. for being you young. And oh, your conversation ended. Move your chair, and we'll bring somebody else to the table. So right. if you're looking at it like, hey, we're all just using this internet to to talk to each other, you don't think of yourself as an imposter because you understand that we're all just sitting at a table having a conversation. And sometimes your role is at the head of the table, and sometimes your role is to go get water for somebody while they're speaking. Well, and sometimes your role is to jump tables as well. Well, whatever. But I'm just saying right. we all yeah. know that our role is what we choose. But I think yeah. there are people who have the mindset that 
we listen, they talk. And if I'm standing up here talking, I'm an imposter. I shouldn't be here. And I think right. it comes from that. I'm not saying everybody, but I think that's the, that's a, a, I don't know if I'm saying that's a facet of it or if that's an element to it or what, but I think that's right. something where the, the imposter thing comes from, because there's no way to be an imposter of just having your own opinion, or there's no way to be an imposter of just yeah. having your seat at the table when you're, when you know that you're at a table with other people. I'm not going to say equals because there's always somebody that knows more than somebody. There's always somebody who's been there longer, but it doesn't mean nothing. It just means that that's a characteristic well, of their existence. So it doesn't mean that they're better or worse. It's, but at the same time, you can sit at a table and know that there's somebody who's been there longer, know that there's somebody who's only going to be there for a minute, know that there's somebody who shouldn't be there. But it's right. different than being at an audience and knowing who cares because we're being told what to do or who cares we're right. here to see and who cares they're here to present. And I'm here to judge what the presentation was. And that's my role. I'm here to, to you know, call, do what I'm told. That's my role. Not here. I'm here to be part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm going to pick, I see, I see Gizzards out there. I'm going to pick on Gizzard for a minute. And I'm going to pick on you. I'm just, I like using folks that are out there in the live chat that are engaging. So if you're in replay, join us live and, and ask questions and become a part of the conversation. Because as you said, for the most part, this is a table. But so there's a, you're right with the, with the perspective or the certain way of, of looking at things. You're absolutely right. But what I see a lot of times, and since we're talking to, predominantly other creators out there is what will happen is you'll have somebody like a gizzard and he's at the podium and he's doing this thing right and there's people in that audience and size of the audience is irrelevant you have an audience period again value your voice and so he's at the podium well i may be in the audience maybe i'm in the audience because i'm waiting to get my time on the podium right whatever it might be and then gizzard says in gizzard's mind he says well I don't, as soon as Clover gets up there at the podium, we're going to get, there's going to be a bigger audience, right? Well, what he doesn't realize is that a certain amount of people in the audience leave. They don't care about listening to Clover, right? Um, so he's not seeing that. He's just seeing the overall size of the audience. And then it, you've got a situation too where you don't realize who your audience is because if, you got to think that, yes, what you're saying about creators sitting in that audience, they're not necessarily, I'm not sitting in an audience necessarily looking at, at Gizzard from a viewer-only driven standpoint, like the vast majority of his audience would be looking at him. Why? Because I'm also a creator. So when he's up there and he's talking, I have a totally different perspective on that, right? I'm not, I'm seeing it knowing some of how the sausage is made, knowing some of the behind the scenes, knowing some of Gary as a friend, as a, right? Like I have all of these different parts and pieces moving around in my mind as I'm sitting out there listening to Gizzard. So my interpretation and what I'm getting from Gizzard being at the podium is totally different than the general audience. And then so for Gizzard to be, you know, have a you know any kind of stress or anxiety or anything else right feeling like an imposter because of that is unwarranted because he would be basing that on somebody that is not his and i'm not saying this in a bad way but somebody that is not his rank and file audience does that make sense to you yeah i think i know what you're trying to say yeah I mean, there's lots of different things out there, but that's definitely something that we've seen. So do you feel like an imposter because you're, you know, the people that you're legit trying to reach? Or do you feel like an imposter because your friends and colleagues make you feel like? And if it's the latter, then figure out a way to get out of that mindset really quick. Because at the end of the day, we're all, we're all colleagues. And that's not a table situation like you're talking about, G. So there are those podium situations and, and just realizing those podium situations, who you are talking to. Um, so as far as the imposter so syndrome, ways to cope with self-doubt, um, I'm going to say that the Internet has changed and it's changed when it was dial up and it changed when it got moved to the phones and it changed when phones could turn into screens and do stuff. And then they turned into smartphones where you touch the screens and, you know, the internet got faster. 
Uh, the internet's pretty much everywhere. You don't have to really pay a lot when you go out to like a restaurant or something. It's usually free. So the internet is pretty much ubiquitous. That's the right word. It's like everywhere. So if you think about that, then you know that the way that people use the internet for education, awareness, marketing, just plain old communication, that's evolving. You don't have to go through all the emails to text messaging to the social platforms to whatever's going to be next, right? So we know that things evolve. So there's no reason that the way that you perceive the way it is marketing-wise or uh, distribution-wise or the way platforms work, that, that, that you believe any of that should be permanent, not in flux. My, my internet thing says my internet connection's weak. Yeah, you're breaking a little bit, but I mean, it's not terrible on my end. I'm still getting what you're saying. Okay, so I guess what I'm saying is, since we know everything changes, I we think I think I think people tend to think, here's where I am today. Here's where everybody else is today. I'm so small. I'm tiny. I'm one. I'm by myself. I'm an individual. I have such few resources. Everyone else seems to be established, large, knows everybody, has ultimate resources, is already got the momentum. Okay, so that's a snapshot in time. But if you remember that this is a film strip, you know, everything moves. So those weren't huge entities at one time, and they won't exist forever. So they're on some kind of a curve. You're on some kind of a curve. So you decide if you're going to be a straight line at the bottom or if you're going to be a fits and starts like a pulse or if you're going to be a big giant curve. And it's all, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do it. But just realize that if you're thinking about self-doubt or imposter syndrome, that's all bullshit. That's all perception and and uh, typically something that you use an excuse to not do something. So if you want some motivation or whatever or some, uh, is that the right word? Some, uh, uh, yeah, you know, but you know, just get a book on discipline or motivation. There's lots of them out there. People have different approaches to it. Find one that fits with you. Uh, and don't worry about the negative stuff. Just do it. There, there's tons of evidence of individuals who succeeded towards every goal you can imagine. Uh, success, fame, wealth, influence, getting a, a an important cause accomplished or made people aware of, created a holiday for, you know, set a memorial date for, you know, whatever. There's all these things started from one individual who wanted to do it. And there's plenty of uh, those stories out there. So find one, you know, use a couple of them, figure it out. And, and you figure out that by the time you spend, you know, a week on something, it becomes less of a unknown. By the time you spend a month on it, it becomes a pretty much a destination. You know where you're going. You spend uh, six months on it. You're probably halfway there. I can't imagine what you're doing that you spend a year deliberately on it. And you haven't accomplished it. So pretty much everything is just a matter of figuring it out, figuring out how many steps there are to it, making a map or a strategy to realistically start hitting those steps. And there is no time for self-doubt. You're just doing stuff. Well, I think when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to some of the, what would be the word, the treatment, well, not treatment, but dealing with, right, and self-doubt, imposter syndrome, things like that. I think one of the biggest things, I think something that ties into imposter syndrome, and especially as content creators, folks that are online, um, is that it tends to be dominated by introverted people. And so I think that they're being introverted and then having that self-doubt or having the imposter syndrome, I think quite often that stuff goes hand in hand. Uh, I've never really been an introvert to speak of. So, um, you know, that's it's, again, different situations for me. It's just observations and, and things I've seen and, and talking with folks. But, um, you know, I think something that could help with that. Uh, I think as you as you start to try to break out of the introverted nature, and you're probably not going to break out of it completely, uh, but I think that you eventually find ways to put yourself in situations that you know you can, they're uncomfortable, sure, but you know that you can handle them, right? And I think that's how you deal with that. And I think as you do that, um, it, it really helps with that, that imposter syndrome. Um, one of those things to get more specific is making events. I think whenever you can make some real life events, you've got a combination of, of several things there that 
that really helped to start mold and, and start some mold and change your perspective because first of all you got a support structure so if you're online and that's all you are is online and it's you know there's an avatar there's a name and words popping up on the screen it's it's really easy especially with self-doubt or, or whatever it's really easy for and it's really easy for folks to be insincere as well so how easy would it be for I'm going to use gizzard as an example for gizzard to do something on his community tab and me go in and just put some kind of comment some kind of supportive comment now gizzard knowing me as a person knows that i mean that supporting comment but how easy is it for somebody just to drop a something that's not even meaning they're just reacting to it and like you know a lot like we hear all the time when something bad happens for to somebody and they're like oh i'm praying for you yeah are you really but are you really praying for that person or is that just a colloquialism that you've used you know what i mean to make that person try to feel better which i'm not knocking that that has its place but i'm just saying if you're if you if you have an imposter syndrome and self-doubt you could be looking at things in that in that light, right? When you make an actual event and then you've got these people that may or may not be a part of your support structure online, right? Uh, folks that you talk with regularly, uh, folks that are like out there in this chat right now and that are on you know panels together and, and private discussions and forums and different things. Always we're always talking with each other and, and strategizing and wargaming. When you actually get to an event. Uh, and hang out in person again you start putting those pieces together that oh okay these people really do care and so because they really do care you know um, you know they don't see me as an imposter so that can kind of help change that perspective a little bit but even beyond that it's when you start seeing total not, I'm not going to go total strangers but let's just go strangers you start seeing those folks that that fall in between an acquaintance let's just say and a stranger right uh they're not your in your inner circle or any type of a person that you communicate on a regular with on a regular basis and certainly they don't know as much about you uh, as that inner circle that inner support group uh, but you go to these events and that could be you know that could be a viewer of some sort maybe it's a public event uh, a viewer that's been made and you're having a conversation with them maybe it's you know a person that works you know with the industry or maybe with an organization you know whatever it might be and then you get that same kind of uh, uh, confirmation I guess let's just say um, and you're not necessarily seeking it but I'm just saying that you walk in and they you know, hey, man, you really enjoy what you're doing, you know, and you can tell that they're genuinely invested in what you're doing. And they don't they also they do not see you as an imposter. Right. So I'm just saying there's a big difference. And that's why I think making some of these shows, some of these real life events and doing some of this other stuff can really help toward not only the whole introverted attitude, but also the imposter syndrome, because it's it it takes the potential for um, for what somebody says to you or those interactions and it puts it into a real life real world setting and makes it a lot easier uh or a lot less likely right to uh, or a lot harder maybe is the word yeah for you to just d dismiss that as random meaningless words on a screen so for those that haven't made live events and that sort of thing uh you know trade shows and different things uh, definitely if you're out there if you're a creator consider working toward that goal and, and make it a few because um, and especially if you're having uh, those doubts as a creator and, and you know, maybe you're wrestling with some imposter syndrome or something like that um, I think it can help a lot All right. so I'm not going to disagree because I agree I've been to a lot of them and I mean I've there are exceptions to the rule I've seen people go and be miserable and go kind of grind themselves into the ground and not return unrealistic expectation i guess is this way to say you know incorrect expectations of what but that, that's again i'm literally thinking of like examples over the years or examples i'm not thinking well you got to wonder why too right you got to kind of dissect I mean, did they did they have a support people, structure people are, yeah exactly There's, that's just right. that's not, so i'm saying yeah. yeah i agree with you however i'm also going to kind of say not even devil's advocate but uh, I've never done anything where I had to do any of that stuff. I mean, I have done some of that stuff, but you, I am a channel that hasn't, I've only done whatever they call, what do they call them now? I don't, do, I don't know what they, they have a name for them now. When you don't, when you, you table videos or tabletop or whatever, 
you can do an entire channel where you're not the quote unquote old fashioned norm. The old fashioned norm is from the TV shows, and TV shows are just doing whatever they did when they first could emulate what a radio show was doing. Uh, you know, on the TV when they first invented, they didn't really put much thought into it. So there was just always a, a person sitting there that they, you know, used as a uh, way to uh, bring people back to the show or, you know, have consistency among the episodes or something. But, uh, you know, having a host of a show is just something they did in television. And so when the Internet came along, that's just the way they emulated it. And, uh, you know, the idea of having a host and a person associated with a project is just a tradition it's not by any means a, a definition or a, a, just a necessity of it and in 2023 uh go look around there's more channels now that are automated computer generated uh completely built than there are people running around with a camera and standing in front of them like the old-fashioned days and it's going to get less and less of that because you're restricted by where you can go, what you can do, what you can afford, what you look like, you know, how many people you got for production, how much time you have to edit. When you can walk up to a computer and say, give me an animated, you know, version of the Spidey verse, except where it's all spider hams, you know, like 15 minutes later, it renders that and you're watching a cartoon that you created. We're living in times going forward. So if you're Clover saying introverted. If you just, I'd say, if you just don't have the interest in doing the old-fashioned way of doing things, yeah, get on board. Like this is the time to to play and be creative. If we're going to talk about um, avoiding burnout and keeping the creative flame, well, one of the ways to do that is to have fun with it. So if you're doing a project by emulating or repeating what somebody else has done, if you think there's a recipe and you've got to do your version of that recipe. I encourage you to do whatever you freaking want to do, whatever you have fun doing, because I'm going to ask everyone out there who's created content for a little while. We're talking to uh, intermediate and advanced people right now. How successful has it been when you've done your weird stuff, when you've done your own stuff, when you've done your creative stuff? I suggest, you know, sometimes those flop, but I bet you they have the same success rate as any of your other content. The stuff that you hope goes viral, that never just happens. You know, you still have a, a failure rate there. People tend to ignore your failure rate when it's something you're eager to see accomplished. But when you're just having fun or when you let your hair down or you just do something goofy, you guys do goofy stuff on that uh, Clover Ghost show, right? Uh, you know, how often are those successes and yeah. what do you learn right. from those successes, right? Like when you right. talk about opera or musicals, right? Hell, you were talking about that one week. Like, you know, it's just stuff that unless you do it once in a while, you never know. So, uh, I'm just throwing that out there that you don't yeah. have to do whatever people used to do because the internet used to be super boring. There's a reason why, uh, you know, it, the different things move on, why people are playing video games and not watching movies because movies got boring. You know, video games were new. Well, how many, I mean, even going back to the old, old school days of like television, right? So how many times did you see, um, you know, when you were talking about that, and uh, you know the Ghost and Clover is a pretty decent example, but you know to take it back to, uh, I think some things more generic that that people may uh, understand better is how many you go back into like you know I don't know the eighties nineties pick your pick your era right I'm going to speak probably more to the eighties here but you know you've got a very popular TV show right and you've got a very popular actor on that popular TV show and they're crushing it and this that and the other but then they pop up on Hollywood squares, right? Or whatever, uh, in a square. Or, you know, they show up on Saturday Night Live or laugh in or, you know, I'm trying to pick the, you know what I mean? A totally different, it's not their TV show well, we, that they're known for. It is interesting because we only, we only had certain places to see people besides their roles in a movie. So True. you're picking yeah. the places where we got to see them in real life, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just a different setting, a different environment. It's kind of what you were talking about, and they're you know, and they you know, I, I guess there was moderate success there, and it just depended. But it, it was it's a it's a totally different thing. Uh, it shows them in a totally different light. Doesn't necessarily affect their mainstream TV show or whatever their appearance on there. I guess it can if they got on there and they said something really off color or stupid or whatever. I mean, I mean, it could, I suppose, but for the most part. It, what I'm getting at is you see, and you still see a lot of that even today. You see, I think, a lot more of that today. Um, but back then, you really didn't have people shy away from that too much. 
Um, and I think that the why is because it, it they're really it really didn't hurt. It didn't hurt to go try this or go be a part of this over here, or do this over here, right? Like, let's go do that. And like, if it works out and it's great, and they become a regular, you know, you become a regular old Hollywood Squares, cool. If not, you're like, eh, wasn't one of the best, you know, guest spots or or squares on the show. You know, maybe you only get invited back once a year instead of you know twenty or thirty or whatever. Um, but you know, you've tried that. You've you've tested the waters there. You kind of understand, and you're like, well, okay, my audience must not. I, I my either one or two things or both, I guess. My audience, you know, really doesn't follow me over here, uh, and or the folks here doesn't follow me back to my my original thing. Uh, but either way, you've still got that interaction. Um, you know, you still learn things. There there's a lot of benefit, I guess, that can come. From stepping out, I guess, and that's what G's saying to an extent. I think is is trying yeah, things sure. and stepping outside of that box every now and then, right? And I, I think that's a great thing. You can even also, if you, even if you only video, if you try podcasting, just see what it's like to do your own thing mm -hmm. with audio from that angle instead of because you might find out it's interesting, fun, lucrative. You know, grows your audience something. Like maybe you get yep. better feedback, maybe you get better uh, uh, people to interview because of it or something. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, you never know unless you throw it out there, unless you try, right? You never know. And sometimes yeah, it may become bigger. It's sometimes, and I've seen this happen before, right? Sometimes, and that's where we've seen channels that have completely shifted their dynamic and their footprint. And it's because they threw something out there and it was like, oh, crap. Look at the reaction. Look at the untapped market. Look at the, what am I thinking? Uh, look at the need, right? Look at the need for this particular they've thing. They've been looking this, this way. Thing. They look right. They've been looking left. They look right, and they're like, oh, my, look at all this stuff that's been said. Yeah, yeah. And it's not that they, you know, didn't enjoy what they were doing. It's not that, you know, the, the people that consumed their content or whatever didn't enjoy it. It was like, whoa, I didn't realize it was all these people over here that, you know, had no other place to. I can't know, tell you of, how know. many times a channel will say, you know, I stopped all that nine millimeter content and the audience just tripled, doubled, quadrupled. I don't know. Oh, that's the fastest way to the fastest way to a million subscribers is to stay away from nine millimeter. That's that's yeah. pretty. That's like that's like number one on the recipe list. It's like a spin on one of them bouncing. Things. Yeah, it's Can't not break. even number one. Right. It's like just under the title of the recipe in bold letters. It's, it's like, like a having a stairway of trampolines to the top. <laughs> right. Okay, right. so John Z is saying uh, lifestyle is very important. Need to live actively so we keep our bodies in good shape and moving. Need to keep that blood flow, and that's a good point. Oh, so, the health uh, aspect of it, yeah. yeah. Well, no, and whatever your health. level is, you can always maintain or improve by doing stuff. You know, yeah. no matter where you're at, good, bad, failing, going up, going yeah. down. You know, act being active is better than not being active. So that's a great point. I'm glad John brought that up. Mental health and health are, are absolutely tied together and related. Uh, you know, the healthier you are physically, uh, the the better odds you have anyway. And I'm not saying there's health, you know, physical good health gurus out there that don't have bad mental health days or whatever the case may be. We all suffer from that. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, but the more physically healthy you are, that's one less issue, right? You're not having any physical health problems. So that's one less thing you've got to mentally think about or or uh or deal with mentally so obviously that frees up your your mind or whatever in that in that regard so definitely and you know as a creator that can be that can be tough uh especially when you're making events uh, you know because uh, those easy, are, it's a new thing to incorporate if you're going to do yoga yeah. or if you're going to take a walk if you're going to go to the gym if you're going to do whatever incorporate that into your content if you're a chat show going to the gym, you think you're the only content creator out of the 3,000 that are going to the gym? Oh, you absolutely you're the only not. One walking your dog or the only one running, the only one to bring in a bike, the only one bringing golf clubs. Come on. You know, you can definitely make that a whole thing and then get that. You got the whole golf audience, the whole tennis audience, That's whatever. True. Seriously. Yeah. So um, yeah. Uh, I wanted to say uh, with the health thing and, and whatnot, Dang it! I was gonna say I was gonna say something that you were saying about that. Um, um, oh, I guess I was gonna say unless you're just dieting, like unless you can just do it through diet, like you're already let's say skinny or thin or something. So all you got to do is 
you know, eat healthily so that you're not withering away or, you know, just hollow inside. But if you're fat, then you're probably exercising, right? Or even if you're skinny and you're trying to gain muscle or something, you're probably exercising. Most people are exercising when you think of like physical health or, you know, healthiness, well-being. And I was going to say, so one, that gives you an opportunity to think about the, that as a meditation, as a way to, you know, if you aren't already, you know, doing something uh with intent with your head while you're doing that exercise you know if you're just sitting there listening to the tunes and doing nothing well one let's think of it this way you could be listening to an audiobook right secondly you could be getting ready for a test thirdly you could be doing some other thing like helping your channel out by listening to somebody who knows what they're doing talk about channel strategies so there's all these different things you could be doing one of them could just be doing some meditation, some self-reflection, those kind of things. And if you haven't tried that before, try it. Have you ever done barbell lifts? Have you ever done butterflies? Have you ever done squats? There's going to be people that say squats, do squats. You know what I'm talking about? A squat where you put the barbell on your back and you go up and down with your legs. Like that's super hard. There's some people that hate doing that. There's some people that pretty much only do that, right? What about them kettlebells? You ever done them? Seen people wing, wing them around like a freaking... I don't know who does that. Somebody in Nordica probably invented those things. I don't know who invented kettlebells, but you know, you ever seen people do kettlebells? That's weird. Some people are going to go, oh, I'd never swing around a heavy thing like that. Other people are swear by it. So same thing with meditation. I mean, if you've never tried it before, then you can just go, yeah, whatever, disregard it. But you could also try it and go, oh, wow, you know what? Guess what? Mental clarity or some kind of you know focus or some sort of like stress relief. That's usually what people do it for. Maybe it's yep you know, focus on getting rid of some pain or something. Uh, now go to the internet and find some of the techniques that I don't know what to call them. Uh, I don't want to say chiropractors because I think they're different, but anyway, doctors who talk about uh, skeletal and twisting and bending and yoga and pinching and, and whatnot, essentially you watch some of these people, they'll essentially tell you, go up to a door, stick your arm over here and look that way or you know, reach over here and bend on the grab your ankle and do that. And then, you know, snap and, you, you know, you've got some kind of tension relief or some kind of muscle relief. And imagine doing some kind of thing like that for 20 minutes in the morning when you wake up, your muscles are stretched, that that achy, aching part of your lower back that's been driving you nuts is relieved by doing some kind of 20 minute, you know, series of stretches and pulls and twists or something. And then it, during, while you're doing that, you know, it takes you a, for, what, a few days or a week to figure out like the actual things to go through. Once you're done with that, now you're just sitting there with an empty mind as you're stretching and doing this stuff. Same thing if you're taking a walk, same thing if you're lifting weights, same thing if you're on a rowboat or a bike or something. You've got this time now. Think of that. Like if you're getting yourself healthy that way, you could be getting yourself healthy mentally. I think that's something that we would do ourselves well as a Second Amendment community to understand that mental health is the same as all those other kinds of healths. If you've got issues with your joints, if you've got issues with your muscles, if you've got issues with your guts, if you've got issues with your, I don't know, your eyes or what or something, like those are physical things that we don't have any problems talking about. Hey, what happened to your eyes? Hey, what happened to your head? What happened to your lip? What happened to your, I don't know, whatever was wrong with you? Nobody has any problems. Sometimes you are polite about it and you don't you know that's not how you lead the first time you meet somebody but at some point you're not you know once you're comfortable you don't have any problem asking them what happened to your leg like or you know what happened of your butt but uh you know if it's uh that kind of thing the mental health the stress um the the snapping at everybody and it's you know due to a tension in the lower back or something uh and struggling with you know how to cope with that or how to maintain that well, you know, that's the kind of stuff that we can, we do our, ourselves a favor as a community to get comfortable and normalize that, that kind of conversation. And that's why we're having it here. I'm glad the robot came up with it and I'm taking time to spend as much time as we can talking about it. Cause we, like I said, we, as, as we become normalized talking about that and casually slip that into conversations we're having with antis who've never even heard the concept from their side of the, the table. And these are probably people that care about other people. That's why they're all upset about what they perceive as our violent guns. But if we can bring up, you know, in conversation, this uh, awareness and casual, comfortable, I guess, awareness uh, of uh, 
mental health or mental health, uh, what's the word, mental health status, uh, you know, something that we maintain and we monitor and we help each other with, then, you know, how much, how does that change the conversation when the other side is just simply yelling about, you know, one dangerous item and their perception of the use of it? Anyway, I'm going off into too many tangents there, but I think that um, the, well, I'll put some eyes in. I don't know if you want to hit on any of that, uh, but I think the the health part of it was a good one that you brought, John brought up. Being healthy. All right, that was my rant. You're done. Always oh, muted. No, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, so then the next one is John C saying lifestyle is very important. Need to live. Wait, did you just do that one? Yeah. But I get rid of that. And then I the next one is John Z saying, when I was a first responder, it was imperative for me to take care of me yeah. so I could take care of others. Um, now he's suffering. So I'm sorry to hear that. And, you know, that can happen. You know, you don't think about it. You go to lift somebody and, you know, you're, it's imperative that they get moved and you forget to take that extra moment to lift the right way. And there's consequences and that sucks. Um, I'm just a student. I'm just making up a scenario there. I have no idea what happened with John. Um, but that's the concept, right? Or we, well, I'll quit talking. I just had a rant. Let well, you hit this one. Well, you're fine. I mean, I hit on that earlier, right? So, yeah, you um, absolutely have to, have to take care of yourself first. I think most folks, this is a report think, saying most folks think the fame and fortune and don't really consider the cumulative impact of the constant grind. Grinding of coffee. <laughs> I mean, I guess I think that there's definitely, I mean, we know people, we hang out with people that put a lot of work into this. I don't think everybody puts a lot of work into it. A lot of people show up on a, I don't want to say a day because that would imply I'm talking about somebody's show, right? But, you know, a day of the week, they put out their thumbnail a day or two early or a week early, however their schedule is, you know, they, they get their show ready. Maybe they throw some emails to themselves or they put something in a folder or something, you know, they somehow they denote a couple of things that they're going to talk about on their show and then they go live. Again, I don't want to throw anybody under any buses or anything, so I'm just using examples. But, you know, somebody does a session of let's look at the things that, you know, the things. Let's let's talk about the things. Let's, you know, let's have the segments of the show. And they kind of have those written for them. Let's pick on Matt. He can handle it. You know, he goes live every night. But, uh, you know, look at any of his shows. Like, you, you got those kind of shows. He doesn't necessarily have to uh, put a lot of time and effort into them. Uh, so there's not too much grind. If he doesn't want to do them, he just doesn't do them. He does them so often that nobody really cares. So I think there's that, right? Like there's some people that are taking it a lot more casually, but uh, I don't know if that's an observation or if that's, uh, I think it's just a, I don't know what that is. It's not devil's advocate because I just think it's another, you know, it's just like there's people out there that aren't grinding and they don't feel the grind. I think you can be doing it with relative ease and then have pushback. That can be frustrating when you're putting an idea out there that isn't popular or that isn't uh, going with the flow. That can right. Be right. And it doesn't have to be like, I'm pro gun or I'm anti gun or something. It can just be, I don't know, like I think some agenda is super important. Like I think my, like uh, this is my state and my state issue that'll kill you. Like there's, you have to understand that most people that aren't in your state don't care at all. And the people in your state only care a little bit. And only some of the people in your state care and only a fraction of the people outside the state, which is probably more than the people in your state, which is a whole other level of frustration. Um, and then unless you're talking to somebody who's in a similar situation, you're only going to get people that try to sympathize with you because they're not, you know, I sorry, I have to say we aren't in that situation. So, uh, you know, what are we supposed to do? Like we can't all, you know, we live in our places. So that's one of those things that's super frustrating, but it happens in more than just physical location. It can happen with, you know, I like knives and it's super important to me for whatever switchblades or something. And you're allowed to have that passion. It's just that you're not going to find a lot of people. And that can be a grind when you're 
you know, one of the few people that have that whatever passion interest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that can be some of the best. Uh, what is the the most loyal communities? Maybe be the way to word that. Uh, man, I would like to say that, except we just have dealt with a massive. What do you call it when uh, things change? So we've had quite a few people leave recently, and you know, there's new people. And what happens is the new people who are there, uh, not doing much, but have been there, will see the absence of the people that have left and they'll start to say more. So the new people aren't necessarily new. They're just new to the scene, new to the activity, new to being part of the conversation, let's say. So those people are about to start showing up again because of the void filled by the people that are jumping out. So, uh, yeah, it's hard to say. I, I agree with you. They're going to be the most focused and interested and loyal to the extent that they have that same passion. But the problem is when you're dealing with such a small, what's it called, group size, that all those regular real life things affect it really hard. You know, if somebody goes down, well, then that could be a 30 year group, especially if that's the person that was keeping track of the get together or the person that kept the person motivated to keep the forum going. You know, the person that keeps the forum going is the nerd is the person that knows how to keep the forum going or pay somebody to keep the forum going. And that happens just as more often probably than the nerd because nerds don't have any, honestly, nerds don't have any interest in doing anything. They only get interest in getting paid to do stuff and then they begrudgingly do it usually and they bitch about it and they act like it's a big deal. But uh, usually it's somebody who's paying somebody and they got to pay some nerd. That nerd's got to have passion or get paid enough to give a shit about your forum or your get community and then it'll fail when that, person gets gone right the person who's either funding it or going but here's the thing that person who's funding it what are they a robot no they're a human so they're going to get sick of it over and over and over and then there's going to be a person or maybe even a group of like six people that keep that person motivated to keep the fucking thing going because it sucks and it's costing a fortune and there's no other incentive other than there is a community that's being fostered by it and that's the part where uh this secondary group of people and those people go, whatever reasons, they get in a fight, they leave, you know, they get old, they find something else to do, they get rich, they get poor, they get married, they get divorced, right? They're gone. Then your support group is gone. You, that thing can fra- is pretty fragile too. So it's not like you just have to lose the one player in these things. It's, it's, these things get, they're, they're they, yeah, they're, so I'm, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, but I'm just saying like nothing's permanent. I already said before, we know things change all the time. So yeah, if you're, um, reaching those specific groups, I'd say value that time, value that time and be as effective as you can. We've had times when we've had second amendment advocacy, so much potential in second amendment advocacy, but because of whatever, no one realized that we had the, that was the time, like that was an ideal time to do something. And everybody just sat around going, man, we're awesome. Let's keep doing this. This is the best. And then two years later, it's all gone. A year later, it was, you know, couldn't even have a chance of doing anything. Uh, three years later, it was a memory. And four years later, nobody knows who I'm even talking about anymore. Well, that's also why it's important to, and we, we talked about this too, and it plays into mental health. It plays into uh, you know, the whole stress factor and anxiety. It's important to experiment. It's important to be able to pivot, uh, you know, kind of foresee things and see directions of things and whatever. It's important to stay away from nine millimeter, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that can help. I mean, if one of the things you, you want to do is continue to do this and can you continue to be, you know, at least somewhat relevant, right? Um, yeah. Don't, don't become stagnant. Uh, that's all I can say. Don't, you know, with your, Editing styles, I mean, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things I see that, that people just, and it's hard to do. It's hard to break out of that mold that, like, oh, man, I drop my little teaser clip here and then the intro thing, and then I have a certain graphic that does this, and, you know, and you just over and over and over and over again. And um, something as simple as, you know, whether it's a different series or whatever, uh, you know, play around with your editing techniques, play around with your camera angles, play around with your B-roll, play, you know, um, you know, we've talked about um, before. We talked about playing around and shifting up the 
kind of the core ideas of the content and things like that, of course. Uh, but, you know, changing up that style every now and then just a little bit. Um, keep people on their toes, kind of see if, you know, it's it's attractive, if, if it attracts. Because you can do things, and this is what a lot of people don't understand. You can do things that are minor, and you can especially do this with the, with the flow of your videos, the way you edit and other things, that could potentially attract more viewers and stuff to your channel while at the same time not alienating the existing ones that you have. Um, you, you talk about like a tightrope that you walk, and it's really not its ne- really not so much a, a tightrope as it is, you know, a big, huge beam. <laughs> like, you probably can't drive a car across it. It's probably not that wide. But there's there's some flexibility you got there. I mean, you, you do have some area of some uh, area of those margins, I think, to, to work within. So... Um, you know, kind of pushing those boundaries and playing around inside those um, is, is a really safe play. It's really easy to do. And you might find out, this is the crazy thing, if you're like me especially and you hate editing, you might find that less editing on your part, which alleviates some stress, it alleviates some of the time sink, which, of course, alleviates stress and anxiety. Um but by you know going a less edited approach or something like that with your your videos, um, actually draws in more people. I mean, you don't lose who you've already got. They're happy with uh, the type of things you're putting out. Um, the way it's delivered is to them is not as mission critical as what's being delivered or how it's being delivered. And so, um, yeah, something I guess something to think about in that. Uh, in that context, you don't have to get as crazy as shifting into talking about something totally different or, you know, unrelated to firearms or 2A or, you know, our, our particular niche. Um, just tweak some little things and see what happens. Georgia Trucker earlier said driving but listening. Overall, you need to get out of your own head and take a break sometimes from yourself and be with others. Last two years, I've been all alone, and it destroys your mental health. Uh, sure, and I think the other can happen, too. If you're too much involved with whatever people are doing all the time, forget that you're an individual, You know what you've got going on in your real life. But, yeah, I hear you that it can get, uh, it, I don't know, I, I guess... I have to say, I, I, you can't because I don't get this way. I have too many people I know online, but uh, and I'm essentially constantly talking to people online. But I'm sure that if you haven't got to that level yet, you haven't experienced that. It might seem like uh, that you don't have a lot of allies out there, but there's a lot of people in the world, and a whole bunch of them are on the internet uh, to hang out more with different people, and you'll find there's there's lots and lots of people getting together all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, I agree a lot there with what Georgia Trucker's saying. Because, I mean, we are our own worst critic. So if we are spending hour in, hour out, day in, day out, whatever, uh, with just us and our own thoughts, um, not necessarily a, a good thing. Uh, what I then, like is uh, that in real life, you get, you know, you don't get to pick your family for the most part. You can pick which part of your family you're going to hang out with, I guess. But, you know, you don't get to pick your family. You can pick your work friends i guess but you're not going to pick all your work acquaintances right you got you got you get dealt same thing with school i guess to some extent depending on what your deal is church civic you know organizations you know you've got the people you can deal with and the people you can sit with and then there's people you're going to work with but uh on the internet guess what we get to pretty much pick who we want to chat with if i want to talk to people about ak-47 bayonets i can go do that if i want to talk to people about this or that i can go find a place to do that right if i want to talk about stuff in general i can do that that here right so uh if i want to go chat with somebody specifically i know how to get with them you know i know some people like this or telegram or some people like facebook or some people like instagram or some people like whatever right so you know you you know a bunch of specifics on the line and that can be a nice alternative to the people you have in real life but guess what it's the other way around too whenever internet Well, just in real life, you're like you're going to have somebody needs to help moving. Okay, great. Yeah, get me away from the stupid internet for a little while. So having a balance there is handy. And if you don't have those people in your real life side, oh, well, there's you can uh, what's that called? Big brother, big sister. You could volunteer at a church. There's all kinds of stuff usually on 
evenings and lunch times, you know, for food. Uh, you're going to find uh, places you can donate time, uh, helping getting things together on weekends for people. There's tons of civic and religious uh, projects that are happening out there. So, uh, you know, just go, you, you can find things to get involved with before you know it, you're going to know more people than you can keep track of in real life. And then that's can, you know, can give you that balance with, uh, what's going on on the line, probably give you, what's the word, I guess it's just from reflection and just taking time to step aside, but you get a new fresh look. A lot of times, you know, go walk away, you work, do something else for a little bit, come back to your internet project. And it's like, Oh, duh, why didn't I do it? Think of it this way, you know, flip the box around and now it works. Yep. Yep. All right. So the next one is Jeff. Well, okay. so quick story on that. <laughs> Oh, that I think it's relevant and kind of a funny story too that happened at a trigger con. So um that it just I'm like it kind of relates to what, what you were just talking about. Just about so people you. know trigger con was in Kansas. Okay, go ahead. It was of all places. Um, but uh, just kinda like knowing where to go, what to do, and sometimes when to give up even. So we get to trigger con day one. And I've got a tactical tailor badge holder. It's got a wide strap that goes around your neck. Super comfortable, blah, blah, blah. The strap had got twisted up on it somehow, some way. I blame Ghost, but he denies it. Anyway, so I get there, and it's all twisted up. Go to put it on, it's all twisted up. Well, that defeats the purpose to put it on twisted up because it's not going to be comfortable. And so there's about four of us guys, maybe even five, uh, that spend roughly about an hour trying to untangle the uh, this badge holder, the strap on this badge holder. And finally, I tell all of them, I'm like, do y'all just go get on the floor, like do your thing. I'll get this done. I'll figure this out and I'll get down there. So I'm sitting there. A couple other people we know from industry walk by. What are you doing? And I explain to them. And finally, I have a realization. And this is, may sound a little sexist, but uh, I think she fires is the only uh the only lady that's out there this morning uh, i don't see it apologetically armed at least not yet but they'll they'll they're friends they'll get where i'm going with this so i have this realization that man i wish my wife was here to show because um obviously a guy can't untangle this thing uh but i bet a chick can untangle this thing in like five minutes right so i get up out of the chair and i walk to the first booth so just so happens it's stroop knives and his wife's there and i said hey this is gonna sound creepy and a little sexist i said but we have literally been trying to untangle this badge holder for an hour i said and i'm convinced that uh a woman could untangle it in five minutes would you give it a try she's like absolutely she gets it and i swear she has it untangled in 30 seconds so when we're talking about you're talking you're talking about a thing that is the, essentially a strap for a piece of paper yeah. around your neck, and you couldn't figure out to get a strap. Dude, it. it was twisted in the most weirdest way, and I didn't even inquire to her as to what she did, and I really didn't wasn't paying that much attention. I was over it at that point, but it got twisted in a way I could not get it untwisted and straightened back out. Like, literally four or five of us could. You may could have, G, but we could. Um, but she got it done in 30 seconds, and and. When you were talking about that earlier, it dawned on me, like, you know, sometimes knowing when to give up and saying I'm taking this to somebody else, you know, or I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out to somebody else for help, right? Or what? sometimes that can be beneficial to be able to realize. What if I had to realize that and done that 15 minutes in instead of an hour in, right? I'd had 45 more minutes on the show floor that I wasn't jacking with a strap if I had just said, look, I'm going to have to just walk around and try to find somebody to help with this. Like, obviously, we're not able to get this done. So I uh, just wanted to draw that parallel. Sometimes it's uh, it's important to realize that. I can't imagine having to walk around with the entire weight of a badge holder or a badge in a badge holder, and then that badge holder strap wasn't comfortable. Oh, my goodness. I know, right? Right. So not to, uh, the next it, not to mention it don't look good on camera. Come on, G. Uh, Jeff saying how to deal with self doubt. Learn and practice. Increase your confidence. That'll improve your confidence, uh, for sure. Right. Everything seems difficult at first. 
period. Everything seems difficult at first. And then you do it for a little while and you're like, oh, I get it now. Then you do it for a little while more and you're like, oh, I know how to do this. Then you do it for a little while more and you're not thinking about it anymore. And now you can just do it. You're not even, you can do it secondhand, which is what we should be able to do with Second Amendment stuff, really, right? All these fights. But I think that's 100%. But uh, it's easy to say. Sometimes, I guess, if you're not motivated to do it, the that stuff gets lost, right? You forget about that stuff when you're not motivated to do it. But typically, yeah. it only takes you a few times, a few processes, a few cycles, a few you know sessions, whatever it is you're doing. It just takes you a couple of them, and then you pretty much got it down. Well, yeah, great advice from uh, Jeff out there. Just remember, it does not apply to 9 millimeter. That's true. You could have horrible consequences that way, actually. You'd be frustrated. You'd think that nothing ever gets better. Bleak. That's why there's so many bleak people out there. All right, so uh, then we got Gizzard, the opposite of bleak. Uh, unbleak. Is that the opposite of bleak? What's the opposite of bleak? Well, it's Gizzard. Um, he, would, he would be beak. But, yeah. Uh, best advice I ever got was from a friend who told me once, you got to be comfortable in your own skin. The hardest part of remembering that is when times get tough. Oh, the hardest part is remembering that when times get tough. For sure. And again, that's where it's nice to have a support group. So uh, collaborate, get with people. Uh, get try to find some kind of a, a regular conversation to be part of get in uh it can be in the audience but that's weak this is the internet this is 2023 get in a conversation with people uh there can't be too many conversations there's nothing on wednesday am i wrong chris is back on wednesday there's still stuff or there's room around chris on wednesdays i don't think there's anything on tuesdays well there's ghost on tuesdays and then nothing oh no barbecues on tuesdays so there's nothing after barbecue. There's nothing before ghost. Uh, Monday, nothing. Thursday, nothing. Is there something on Thursday I'm missing? Friday, Gear report. Oh, yeah, Gear report. So you got before or after that. So there's plenty of time slots. There's nothing that's super established anymore. Yes uh, and no, right? It depends on what, what it... So here's the thing with that. We can sit here and say that. But there's all kinds of stuff, all hours of the day and night. So depending on how many channels you're aware of, what types of interests you have, you know, and even within the gun tuber space, there's stuff every night of the week, every night. So, you know, I, I get what you're saying, but I think people can often put way too much stock in. And we, because we did this back in the day, back in the day of gun channels, like, a very tight knit group of creators were super saturated every night of the week. And we worried about that a lot. Um, I don't know that creators need to worry about the whole cork and stepping on toes. Thing. Oh yeah. Like, no, that's if, true. If, it, Without if it's gun a good channel, time for you, no because here's the thing, if there's another show and let's just use Tuesday night at, at eight o'clock, right? Um, if there's another show Tuesday night at eight o'clock, but Tuesday night at eight o'clock is the only free time you've got to do that. Okay, do you not do it because you're afraid of competition or corking or whatever? Um, do you just not do it at all? Like, that's to me, that's dumb. Like, do it. Like, it, it, whatever. 100%. Though that was one of the worst, maybe not the worst for sure, but it was one of the negative aspects, if not one of the worst negative aspects of gun channels, was because there was negative stuff for damn sure. The Gun Channels was a seven-year project with a whole bunch of, I don't know, thousands of people participated in, and it was essentially a website software system that gave us all kinds of functionality. So if you go look at MeWe, it's the same thing that MeWe is using. It's the same thing as, it's the same software package that a whole bunch of stuff is using still today. So we were using the software package. We branded it Gun Channels, and then we maintained it. And we turned on only selective pieces. Most of these people turn on every single bell and whistle, and it just makes it super difficult to navigate through. I mean, I'm not saying I had it easy to navigate, but I didn't have everything turned on. But I had the pieces turned on that were useful for us to keep a community together. So during that time, one of the negatives was because it was created when YouTube tried to turn into Facebook. YouTube in 2012, the end of 2013, end of 2013, YouTube really, really, really tried hard to shove everybody into something they called 
I can't remember what it was called, like U, uh, Q or some shit. It was it was a weird name, and uh, they are at sign Q or something, and they tried to shove everybody into there, and it was going to be their version of Facebook, and they and it was horrible, and it was shitty, and it, nobody liked it, and we were looking for something else, so we just built this place for people to go, and because at that era, everybody was, we were three years into live streaming uh, it all started in 2010 11 really uh, 2010 we started streaming 2011 we were able to stream on youtube so we had this huge audience of people that would stream uh live and because of the nature of it being developed and being created like clover said we had somebody was on at seven on tuesday and then at eight somebody else was on and then at nine like if we were one big channel and these were all the shows on the channel or something but because the audience had no interest in watching two shows at the same time nobody broadcast two shows at the same time now other audiences sure there were other shows on it's just that the main chan uh, group of audience of gun channels only watched one show at a time so when we built gun channels they had no interest in watching two shows at the same time and i kept telling them you know we can have as many shows as we want at the same time you can always watch something and rerun if somebody really wants to they can watch both shows at the same time or they can choose to watch one and then the other but you know just like clover just said there's really no reason to but tradition and the, just the way people did it and the fact that there was essentially one audience that everybody was talking to one portion of the one audience there was just never a time when the two you know two factions of the audience decided let's have our show at the same time or when that did happen it was like on a friday or something and it was kind of inevitable but anyway so that was one of the worst parts about gun channels that kind of unintentionally because i did everything i could to not have make it happen there was just no way to make that many people do anything period they just can't do that but i tried really hard to encourage people to have multiple shows and we just never could and that's uh again without gun channels around without that one audience that's trying to watch one thing at a time like clover saying there's no there's no rules there's really no tradition and honestly it's better off for the health of the community to be able to have multitasking to be able to have multiple things on because we won't work that we won't succeed if we say the schedule of opportunity is one show at a time throughout the year because that'll be a number of shows but if we say we can watch any number of shows at the same time throughout the year that's an infinite number of shows so if we limit ourselves to one show at a time that's setting ourselves a a, a, a limit that we don't need to yeah and you're also not from a metrics or an analytics standpoint it's hard to gauge things right so if you so either way, whether you're the show that's just coming in or you're the one that's established. So let's say you know, you're Tuesday at 8 o'clock. That's the example we used. You know, and you're that established show. And then another one's like, okay, I'm going to do my show then. It's the only time of the week. You know, I can do it and I do it. And then, you know, they do it. And then you notice this major drop, right, in your viewership. Well, that tells you that that shows at least long term, right? Maybe they're checking out something new. Maybe that's why it dropped is because it's new. But, you know, if it's anything that's sustained, you're like, oh, OK, well, that shows better potentially than my show. And maybe I need to up my game or maybe I'm in a bad time slot, even though I've had Tuesday at eight o'clock forever. Maybe this is actually a bad time plot slot for me. And this is not where the core of my audience a, a day or time that's best for them to watch live. Right. And so I'm picking up people that are less loyal, less interested in my stuff. They're just watching because it happens to be something that's on Tuesday at eight o'clock. And when something better comes along, they're going to jump over to it. Right. Yeah. You're so better all kinds the of cat show. But as soon as the jet ski yeah. show starts, then they're not watching you no more. Yeah. So there's there's things you can learn, you know, analytic and metric wise to having that type of competition go on. And that's one of the things with gun channels that we lacked because we were trying to schedule it out like the TV guide on a specific channel. Right. And like it's one of the things that was lacking in that was, yeah, you pull that core audience from show to show to show, which was great because you kind of had a certain amount of built in viewership that you didn't have to work for or well i'm not gonna say work for you still had to put on the show obviously or whatever i don't want to downplay the viewers of those because we had some awesome viewers and still do that to this day that hang around from those days but well, it was a phenomenon uh, at the time because it was yeah. so fairly new and it was the people who experienced the the beginning of it seeing the evolution of it and there was still that whatever that is that like that 
that ownership, I yeah. guess, maybe is the word. And like that, you know, we're going to see this. This is just our thing. Like they, they, we were all watching TV shows and then going on to the line to talk about the TV shows. And then that evolved to, oh, we're getting attacked. Let's do advocacy. Oh, there's going to be rallies. Okay. We created these rallies. Oh, these rallies are attended by all kinds of people. And, you know, these organizations took them under their wing and like, wow, that was neat. And then like, oh, this continued to happen. And we were part of that. Like as those people trickled away, then it just became, we're watching TV shows. We're watching TV shows. And there's people that make the TV shows and we're the people that watch the TV shows. And we have this conversation while we're watching the TV show. And they have that conversation while we're watching the TV show. That's gets into a whole different dynamic, I guess. Yeah. But this, this, you know, this bleeds into the whole idea, which can be a mental health thing. It can be making excuses for your channel and whatever, but you know, it's, it's a common thing to think about competition, right? That's a thing in sports. It's a thing with dating, right? The dating scene or whatever. It's a thing with your you know job, with your career. Um, I mean, good Lord. I mean, it's just, it's a thing, right? Business. Um, it's just something that we, we pick up on and we're kind of taught from the early, an early age that there is this thing called competition. And then, so as creators, we tend to let that thing bleed over into the creator sphere and the creator life. And you got to realize that the idea of competition in a creator world is vastly different uh, than anywhere else. Um, and it's, 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 it's a market economy still, you know, the cream usually will rise to the top. Yes. Uh, but because you don't have all of the, environmental factors or necessarily uh, economic factors and other things in play like you would with let's say or uh what am i you know, like with a business and competition you know another business can come in and just have way more angel investors than you with billions of dollars at their disposal and just kick you all over the place it's not that they're any better right um you know well, same thing can come in. with content creation you've got established creators that essentially pre prey on the creativity of the individuals and just pick the stuff right. that they know would work right. and then emulate what they see. But yeah. So I think there's good to some extent you gotta be aware of that potential. Oh I'm not saying not it like doesn't exist. Constant. I'm not saying you have to constantly be worried about it, yeah. but be aware because that certainly could happen, especially I mean it's, it may not happen when you're just farting around. But as soon as you fart around six times and poop gold yeah, somebody's going to notice that you're pooping gold over there, and they're going to start stealing your gold poop. Well, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying it's different than what we are conditioned through life and experience to think about as far as competition goes. It's, it's just a well, and I like I, I'm going to disagree with you because I like the idea too of um, I've just seen too many people like let's say Night Strike uh, when they were doing Night Strike and Smeggy when they were doing Hit or Miss Tuesday nights nine o'clock versus trying to remember back to what other shows were at that era where there were team ups, but you know, whatever the equivalent of, there was probably something on Friday, whatever gizzard, whoever gizzard replaced, whoever he's, whoever he knocked out and took the position that that played that slot from, uh, I forget who that was, but uh, so I think it was a Friday night show that hit or miss was competing with. But uh, anyway, so there was that whatever one up men like we have our adversary out there you know they're, 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 they played yeah. with them, is what i'm saying like i thought and there's cool. also such a thing as friendly competition too That's how you guys yeah. yeah 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 there's nothing wrong with that i like i like the idea of friendly competition um and that's where both parties are you know they know each other they you know especially um man i'm trying to think of just think of an example you know, because I've had that a few times that it was like, oh, well, I got to do this show and this other show. And it's like, it's just do it. I mean, um, if if we kind of know each other and we know that it's not, you know, that creator's not doing anything in a predatory nature and all of that. Um, heck, if they mop the floor with me, take my spot, knock, mop the floor with me, then again, like I'm... Uh, educated aware uh, whatever enough to know that if if you're if you come into my slot and mop the floor with me or whatever or maybe you don't maybe you're just doing a better job and how many creators have passed me up on the sub count over the years right 
is a is a great example. Snob is out there, and so Snob is definitely one of them. Yeah, all of them. Snob's out there and is a great example. Um, Snob is just doing some things that have resonated, and I haven't I haven't done that yet. Like he's just done a better job at things than I have. I mean, right? He was just he's been in he's positioned himself oh. in the right place at the right time for certain things. Right? It's not a dig on me that Snob passed me. Not necessarily. Let me back up. It's not necessarily wow. a dig on me. That snob has passed me up as far as subscribers. Like, no, here's, here and I'm is. happy, and I'm happy for snob. That's the overall thing. I don't resent snob for that. Right. So I'm like, finish there, but I hear here's the thing, and I just noticed this as we're talking. We're 90 minutes in, so we're not going to go forever today. But um, we're talking uh, mental health and lifestyle. So we've kind of gone a little bit of a tangent here, but again, we're talking kind of. Um, channel strategy and being realistic and that being conducive to your mental health, right? Your mental right, health can lead, being a can lead to whatever, yeah. right? Yeah, so, can lead uh, to, yeah. But when you're talking about snob and you, what you're talking about, and I think I realized this, I don't know, for the last half an hour, we've been talking about content creation in the context of live streams period and then you know gun, gun channels and, and live streaming and a schedule of the week and blah 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 but we're talking about live streaming when in reality we're really talking about content creation so that can be blog posting that can be writing songs that could be making memes Correct. that could be doing so many other things and this all applies it's just that instead of really talking about a competition for time slots for a live show We'd be saying like who gets the funniest meme out first or who gets the funniest meme out about this issue or, you know, who gets the memes out about the best issues or the most relevant issues. For example, the comment period that's happening right now. Challenge those who aren't paying attention to the comment period. There's two comment periods happening right now. Both of them are worth our attention because they indicate to the politicians, the political strategists, how much we're paying attention how able we are to mobilize and how offended we are by them using our tax dollars to spend the, their time doing this garbage when they should be at least worrying about tobacco and uh, alcohol, which have much more higher death rates in the United States, especially if they're going to consider us a health issue, but they could at least be going after the criminals and not the you know, gun owners in more and more ways. So we have these comment periods that no one's paying attention to, right? Like, that's important. <clears throat> Sorry, I went on a tangent there. But, uh, you know, so we've got shit. Where did I come from with that? Sorry, I went on a tangent with the, the things we were talking about. Different uh, types of content. Yeah, that we were talking about uh, live streaming predominantly. And I just I guess what I was saying, like, you, you can be doing other things besides content creation. And, uh, uh, or excuse me, we can be doing other things besides live streaming as far as content creation. But we could be having the same issues. Uh, but in that case, I guess I was just making a, a, a thing there that we guess we kind of focused, hyper focused on on live stream in there. But I guess the reason I was going to say you guys has changed is because you predominantly do live streaming. Uh, you do live long form interviews now as a podcast. You don't lean your content on YouTube towards what YouTube looks for because of what the audiences of YouTube predominantly look for, which is content like uh what's the word consumable content uh three minute videos short videos uh videos of duration less than 10 minutes or you know 20 minutes or less around 10 minutes or less usually the average kind of covers you know depending on people's interest in youtube at the time and what other platforms are doing and you know the time you know if it's an election year or not all these things are going to be a factor uh you kind of plow through like a lot of channels just doing mostly live stuff and mostly long format. And that's just going to be a different audience, a different size of audience, a different interest of audience where snob creates presentations of a buffet, right? He does some technical stuff. He's done some funny stuff. He's done some uh, event reviews. You know, he's been first to do some things uh, and he's, he's a machine at it. He puts out a lot of consistent content that's of quality and it's timely. So it's not, fluff and it isn't filler so what he's doing is you know a consistent deliberate effort at the things that would be conducive to channel growth and audience growth and you're doing stuff that's 
keeping the community together and attracting audiences and sponsors on and podcast audiences. You know, you're doing things with a different focus. So, you know, you have a different success rate on YouTube, on the YouTube uh, parameters of 2023. If you were doing what you're doing now in 2015, you'd be a bigger channel than Stop because they they liked live streaming. They thought that was the key because it kept people on the platform. They just, if they would throw ads on here, if they would have put ads on top of live streams, we'd all be rich. They just never did for whatever reason. I guess because they're scared, scared we're going to say like a bad word or something. Well, that's uh, that's coming down the line uh, with uh, mid-roll ads and different things with live streams. So that is something that they're. I think they're behind the curve, but they I mean, are. I guess kind technically of we can, but we have to launch the stream through YouTube. I mean, I technically am in it. We could launch the three stream through YouTube, host it in YouTube. Wouldn't be able to do any of this without a real pain in the butt. And as far as having a co-host and bringing up anything on the screen and backgrounds. And but, but you're talking about ads on live stream and just, just to throw this out there for everybody. Um, so here's the here's the workaround for that and even, and even if they do get the mid-roll ad thing lined out i'm still gonna probably follow the same recipe because it does pretty well uh, is so what you do is you've got your long form you know live stream essentially your quote-unquote podcast uh first of all you go seek outside you know sponsorship for that uh, and then that covers basically the youtube side of things and then you port that over into the audio world and forever now pretty much they've had uh, uh the ability to advertise over there so uh you do get your ad money and other things so you in a sense you get to double dip and so uh there are other ways around it it's not a it's not a um a non money making endeavor for sure uh if you just kind of figure out how to navigate navigate that and, and best and what works for you and i think I've, I've got a pretty decent model certainly not the best but a pretty decent model with that but yeah we went off on a on a tangent and we're at 90 minutes so clover turns into a pumpkin after 90 minutes so we got to get it going hurry up um i got another starred one over here uh, turn it into a pumpkin spice get it right man latte so yeah. the Bryce saying earlier that uh, so that's the answer to how many gun tubers it takes to untangle a badge holder. That's Apparently. <laughs> then uh, Snob was saying, for me, the best thing I ever did for my mental health was to learn how to not worry about anything. Just remember that it'll all work out in a washing. So that's a good point. Time heals all. It's a kind of old adage, I suppose. And uh, it's effective. I mean, it's, it's, it's a f true to, for most things, just about most yeah. things. Except for Amazon. <laughs> uh, yeah, but inside, it, inside joke. Thirty years from now, we won't care. Yeah, that's true. Hey, hey, a year from now, we may not care. Right? Who knows? You don't know the future. But anyway. Uh, but then the last one that I've got up here is another one from Snob. I think his clover is just too good to use the simple strap they gave us for one day in place of his fancy holder. This is true. This is true. No. So I put that one up here for a reason. So all kidding aside, first impressions are impressions. I, I'm, I've been saying this for a long, 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 long time. You go to an event and I use SHOT Show because it's the one I like and I go to. But uh, you go to that event and there are 60,000 people there. So a bunch of those people are in, or no, that's the 60,000 attendees. What am I saying? And then there's a whole bunch of people in booths. I have no idea what that is. Probably thousands and thousands of people in the booths. And then there's the 3000 medias, and, you know, those numbers will fluctuate a little bit, but that's essentially the percent, you know, the ratios. So there's 3000 medias, the, uh, th whatever I just said, number tens of thousands of attendees, and then a whole bunch of people working there. You're walking up to a booth and they're essentially sitting in a, you know, 12 by 12 booth amongst other booths in a row. If they're lucky, they're in a wide aisle so they can see a little bit. If they're not lucky, they're almost seeing what three booths in front of them. And that's it they're for the whole shot show. And then these people that walk in front of them, mostly walking by, if they're lucky, look at their booth. If not, they're looking at their phone. I imagine what 90% of people are just walking at their phone as they're walking by now, if you were sitting in a booth. So imagine sitting in a booth and, uh, um, you, you're, some people are walking by, you've got all these different 
so that's the person sitting in the booth. Now you're the, think of these, the media people coming up to that person in the booth. Uh, they're all coming up and either wanting something from you, some attention, some time, something, right? Some information, something, some maybe just your time. So uh, you're making a first impression amongst all of that. And that's where I guess I'm saying, if you come up with the cheap thing that they just give you, the basic thing, how many of the other me be doing that? probably a percentage a chunk of them so you're not setting yourself a style and if you have one that you're comfortable with, and is an opposite of that you have a holder that you're comfortable with and that's got some function to it like it holds your business cards you're able to you know flip just smoothly i guess put your put their business card into a place where you securely you know in a you know pocket or some aspect of it without uh, even looking right without even yeah. breaking eye contact because you've yeah. used it for so many shows you just it's yeah. like wall it away it's just you create that impression on this before right i'm getting at is i think that i'm you know, i really think there is a reason to bring a badge or, and i think if you're going to do all that i fucking made it in the usa badge holder why would you buy garbage buy something made in the usa it's going to be something that they whip up to just make money. That's what they're for, because they take them very time to sell up, and it's something that they probably have their new, you know, people were do then you know as a project to, and then they're inexpensive. So uh, they're one of the least expensive things you can buy from a U.S. nylon manufacturer, and then you get an account, uh, in with that nylon manufacturer. When you walk up to a manufacturer with their badge holder on, you know what I'm saying? The hell. So don't use plastic garbage. You're, you're definitely saying something when you walk up with like, you're like, yeah, I didn't, I couldn't be bothered. Yeah, I'm here and they made me wear this badge. Or you're like, hey, this is me and I'm here to work with you. I've done this before. So I know that's a rant, but I think badge holders. Well, snob are, gets that. Uh, snob is, that. snob gets that. You know, I've shifted uh, with NRA and then, and then TriggerCon. I've shifted into the, you know, movie inspired football jerseys. And so, you know, you get... Uh, that's crazy. A lot, of, that's crazy. lot of people that say a I lot of stuff. Get, I, I can't get. Yeah, behind. I get it, but I mean, it it goes into. I know you can't get behind. You may not be able to get behind that exact uh, tactic, but you just got behind the idea behind said tactic, um, which is to kind of be different or whatever. And so, whether that's crazy shoes or a crazy hat or you know something, you know, you, you break yourself apart from the drab, you know, colored, you know, five eleven tactical gear wear and people and, and whatever and snob what i was getting at is snob understands that because snob's got to where he wears some pretty some pretty crazy flamboyant designs on uh, shirts and stuff so uh but he's not altogether wrong with being too good for that um because for me and you spoke to it with that particular badge holder the angle at, the angle at which the straps attach to the badge holder itself combined with the width of the straps it's just you know when you're wearing something all day uh, and especially moving around a lot uh, the especially the ones with the little nylon rope or whatever on them like oh my god they'll behead you i mean th those things are horrible. no they're not helping you at all and then they yeah. throw your badge all over the place yeah they're not working yeah it doesn't stay straight where your name and all your stuff show but on the other like hand because that. that's what i use on the other hand and they stow, they go away. And that's 90% of the time I ain't wearing a badge. So when I need it, I got it. But mine is that style because I deal with it because I only wear it once in a while. But yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, and I don't put a bunch of crap on mine either. And I also don't, you know, mine's pretty, whatever, low right. speed or whatever, yeah. high speed, low, whatever, because I don't have a lot of pockets in my. But that's because when you do stuff outside in the desert, uh, that thing gets sweaty. Like, I don't want a bunch of stuff on me. Like, it, you know, like, that starts to get annoying in the heat. So, again, when I'm inside, it's a little bit annoying. But when I'm outside, it's less annoying. And when it's sitting in my pouch, when it's not being used, it goes away. And those straps take up space. That's the problem. Because I have those kind. I think I have the exact one you have, plus a bunch of them like that. And uh, they're great. But, yeah, they you got to put them away when you're not using them. Yeah. But anyway, so... Um, when you forget a badge holder, that's on you. That's you're not professional. You're not prepared. <laughs> that's why I carry a couple of three or four, four of them. You know, it's, you can have backup ones. Plus, if you know where to go, that's an opportunity to get a new one. Like, oh man, I only use your badge holders and I forgot mine. So, what do I do? What can I do? 
and that means you get a free badge holder essentially since it's an intermediate class yeah um i think if we missed anything it was uh their fault not our fault uh clover's rushing me out of here so we got to get going she right. fires said hey and we said snob a couple of times roy is also out there oh i guess we said his comment uh dj been posting am i missing people oh i'm sure you probably are because we are broadcasting on like five. three different channels so yeah barbecue also out there new york outcast i just missed that one oh and uh aaf american ammo and firearms thanks for joining in i haven't seen uh, and in john z of course uh so the the concept the the topic today was uh mental health and lifestyle we're not here to offer medical advice because i don't think there is any just like if you had a broken arm what are we going to tell you like don't arm wrestle right now with it or something but uh you know what we are trying to do is create some conversation about these topics and normalize help uh inspire some uh thought about it wait what happened here what happened she fires through a 20 dollars super chat at us thank you for that missed a couple of these things that, the means, that means she's still listening which is awesome very much yeah thank you she did a live not too long ago by the way folks so on sundays you're not, uh, if you're not checking that out uh you probably should yeah pretty good chat for a girl you know they do they can do chats it's legal now um let's see so we were saying about the the robots gave us three aspects of mental health avoiding burnout we've talked about that i think a bit imposter syndrome we started with that one work-life balance i think we pretty much hit that you know in the midst of it right then we have that it wasn't satisfied with those because we've been doing those three points and i wasn't sure how today was going to go with this one and i didn't want to you know start with the topic and then end up talking about 22s or you know the the price of tea in china or something shotguns some god stuff. forbid we'll just you know just go off on a random topic right so i wanted to stay on topic so i asked the robot a couple other questions uh blah 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 and then it got real wordy the robots get real wordy so i said give me four key points from what it, i'd asked it earlier and came up with a stand uh, here are certain four key points distilled from kind of a conversation i had with the robot establish and maintain healthy boundaries engage in continuous learning and balanced content creation number three prioritize physical health and financial stability and number four cultivate positive community engagement and support networks so i don't know if you need me to put those on the screen or not to help you see them or whatever but again like maintaining healthy boundaries was number one engaging in continuous learning and then balancing your content creation that's number two Number three is prioritizing health and financial stability. And then number four was a positive community engagement and support networks. So it's kind of what we've talked about today, just in a different way, right? Well, yeah. it's because we're cheating because I knew that. And that's what we kind of, you know, we, we uh, smushed those three into those four. In a well, way. I haven't I haven't seen those or heard about those until you just said yeah, yeah, now. Exactly. And I think we did a pretty good job. And I think that's pretty solid. So yeah. what I did was make that the poll. So if you're, I'm assuming you're not looking at the poll out there. We have a bunch of people that answered the poll and I worked it out with YouTube and it is absolutely free for you to use the poll today. So those were, the question was most critical component of mental health and lifestyle quality for a second amendment content creator. And I probably should have said in 2023. So the number one was maintain healthy boundaries. Second was continuous learning and balance. Number three was physical health and financial. And then number four was community engagement. So without looking, what do you think is winning or losing or what? what how do you think this one came broke down? Oh, I've got to unmute. So we had what? Balance, financial? Ba boundaries, balance, physical and financial, and then community. Balance and boundaries on the same one? No, no, those were the first two. Bal boundaries was number one. Boundaries. Number Learning one. Okay. and balance is number two. Balance health is number two. Physical and health and financial health is three. Financial, okay. Community was four. Community was four. Probably okay. balance. See Probably them. balance. Probably balance, right? Yep, that one's winning. And then 31% uh, 
healthy boundaries, and then 19% community engagement, 0% physical and financial. So that has to do with the stoic nature of people, I imagine, who give a shit about other well, people, I think, because if you only want from other people, you only care about yourself, and all you see is what benefits you. When you care about other people, you worry about how you relate to other people so that you're not offending them, and you tend less to care about your own needs. I think that's just the well, nature of those you know that want and those that give. I think there could be another dynamic. If you're paying attention to and taking care of those other things, then your mental health and well-being and stuff may be okay because those are those other things are factors that contribute to. You know what I mean? You've got you may have less to worry about as far as your mental health and well-being if you're pay, if you've got those boundaries nailed down and the balance and the financial situation. You I mean you got less to worry about, which there's less piling on to that mental health issue. So. Uh, there could be that dynamic at play too, like worrying about your mental health after it's and without worrying about contributing factors to the mental health first, right? Like that's not a very good approach. It's yeah, like it's I'm not going to worry about I'm not going to worry about burning myself or breaking my leg or cutting my arm off or anything like that. I'm not going to worry about any of the factors that lead to that. I'll just go to the doctor when that happens. Like that's a dumb way of looking at things. It it, it comes from we have to do that with. Uh, let's say triage you have to do that to some extent if you're going to worry about your splinter and you let someone die of asphyxiation you're an asshole so we have to know that there's a balance right but it's uh, it's also right. strategic to i forget where this comes from so i apologize if it's some anti-gun thing i don't know where it comes from literally but there's at some point it's strategic to stop attending the people drowning coming down the river and it's time to go up river and figure out where these people are coming from and stop it. You know, you can right. you can only save so many people right. by, by reacting. You have to go stop the flow of bad stuff to be, you know, every once in a while. So right. while it seems sometimes like, Oh, I, I don't, I can't take time out for myself. No, it's strategic. You need to take time out for yourself. Otherwise you won't be there to fight the real next because whatever's this little stuff is, is because of something else. And that's what you need to be there for. Don't let them take you out by some tons of splinters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, again, thanks to she fires for the super chat. You know, the YouTube doesn't make much cash. So the super chats are much appreciated. Uh, we both have Patreons, So uh, people that want to subscribe mm -hmm. to our projects can head over to Patreon and essentially I don't know what clovers are. I think I give everybody a dollar because most of my Patreon funding people I fund comes from my Patreon. So I don't want to go crazy with it and I am doing it to make money. So uh, we do pour about $35 back. Uh, I wonder if I should keep doing locked and loaded because they shut down. I imagine I'll do it for a couple of months oh, and wow. then shut it off. Yeah, I usually give. I've had quite a few that have bowed out that are not doing anything anymore and I've ended up dropping them. Uh, but I usually give it a few months just to see if it's temporary. Well, I only do a box, so I leave it just so that they know yeah. they were cared about. It's just a significant. A significant yeah. It's a sig. What am I trying to say? It's not right. a real money. It's just a buck. But anyhow, so I, I throw thirty five dollars right back at Patreon. Essentially, a buck oh, yeah. to everybody, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. And then, uh, um, well, I do the same, but it's it's YouTube channel members. Most people are five bucks. Yeah. Most people give us a cup of coffee each month, you know, five bucks, and some people buy us a, a lunch each month, like twenty bucks. Uh, and depending on how we have our Patreon set up, maybe if a gun shop wants to come along and support one of us, they could throw a couple hundred bucks at us, and we'd be more than happy about that. And that would allow us both to be able to do what we're doing on a bigger scale, and you know, more time devoted to it. But in any case, most people are throwing a cup of coffee, a lunch at us, and we appreciate it. You know, it's just like a lot of people say, hey, let me take you to lunch if you're ever in blah, blah, blah. Let me take you to lunch. Well, how about you go to Patreon and throw 20 bucks at us? And that's the same as taking us to lunch. And that accumulates. And imagine if 10 people threw 20 bucks at us. I'm pretty sure the way math works, it's a couple hundred bucks. And that accomplishes some stuff for setting aside time. Uh, for me, it's servers. It's uh, other stuff, the software and the as you can't imagine there's just all kinds of little stuff there's about three pieces of software that i'm looking forward to getting into uh one of them i think i can jump onto next month thanks to the patreons uh, and that'll give us the ability to work on uh essentially editing using the ais you know i'm really interested in i've already been working with the ais thanks to the patreons you know we're uh 
a paid subscriber to the Microsoft AI, uh, but I've used most of the AIs out there, at least dabbled with them or use them regularly. There's like three or four of them that I use regularly, but uh, there's a AI editor that I'm really looking forward to getting uh, a subscription to at least for a month or two to see what the, what kind of power it really has. Anybody that's interested, especially Patreons, but anybody that's interested in that, that's what we're here for is in these coaching sessions. If you're interested in picking our brains, having some, uh, some of our experience or some of our uh, opinions on this different stuff that's out there, stuff that we've used or stuff that we're aware of other people using, that's, you know, give, feel free to ask us in here and specifically, or I mean individually. But uh, anyway, our Patreons allow me to do that. They allow Clover to do what he's doing. And uh, we do appreciate that. So uh, we also have the store. I'll put a commercial up for the store at the end of all this uh, where you can grab stuff. Clover has a store at his website, but he's also got a uh, podcast series in the works. Why don't you tell us what's happening this week? Got uh, No Handed Shooter tomorrow, which is uh, going to be a pretty cool one. And then uh, Lock Grips on Thursday. And of course, the Trigger Con content is rolling out. That'll be um we won't have any anything drop on that tomorrow or thursday because of the podcast i don't want to dilute any more than uh one a day but over the next week or so will be a trigger con drop virtually every day uh to get that stuff uh get that stuff out did drop the uh, day one just floor walk or whatever the video yesterday today or this evening rather will be the uh, range day montage so give you a little idea uh, up front before we get into any talking with any companies or any, any booths, give you a little idea about, uh, you know, what the event is about. I thought, heck, I'll drop those first because those, uh, it being TriggerCon being an event open to the public, you know, uh, get those out first. And then that way folks are aware of, hey, this is something that, you know, may or may not want to try to check out next year or go to or whatever, which can be kind of neat. Um, you know, you were talking about, um, and I didn't want to de derail the conversation earlier, um, and I'm assuming I can talk about this. I don't think I'm under, under an NDA with it, um, but I don't even know if I'm a part of the program necessarily with it, but I did notice something today. We were talking about, uh, earlier we were talking about the competition and creators and that whole idea, and we were talking about how money can play into that, right, the financial uh deal and how channels can just come in and dominate if they had a bunch of money or whatever. Um, so um, this morning, and I don't know how long it's been there, but I've been kind of out of pocket and certainly I've not been looking at my creator dashboards and stuff like that uh, in the last several days. But uh, in my YouTube studio, uh, I have a tab now for promotions and it's in beta. Um, and this is a feature that you can literally promote. It's a paying feature. You had to pay. We're for live. It. We're live right now. You know. Well, I it's in my dashboard, so right. I think it, I think it's okay. But I'm just saying it's there. I'm just curious if anybody else has that that beta feature or not. I've not used it, so I can't talk to any of the features or anything. But uh, if anybody out there notices that, uh, check it and see if you're a part of that program or not um so anyway that could be something i'm just saying moving forward i don't know anything about it but i noticed that this morning when we were talking about the whole idea of money or paying to play I'm like hey huh it's kind of like facebook ads or something maybe right um so i don't know i don't know if that'll make a difference for some channels or not some channels like to holler that they're not getting the exposure and everything that they they should be and so um, speaking of paying to play Thanks for the super chat. We're gonna give the little dog one. I only got these little half of biscuits because otherwise I gotta go open a whole new thing of biscuits. We'll give him a pile of these little little bits of biscuits though. Thanks for the super chat. Now, now the little, half, the little puppy's happy too. Yes, he is. <laughs> I've been yeah. coached by highly paid coaches to not put dogs on the uh, internet when I'm talking about two way stuff. So. Breaking the rules. Oh. All right. So with that, uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. We'll be back next week. We've been doing this series for uh, Intermediate. Should we break it? We've talked about breaking it and talking about SHOT Show. Uh, 
I'm actually thinking about breaking the Saturday thing and talking about gun rights policy, even though none of us technically went. I only went to half of a one day of it. And uh, I don't know how much Tony watched, because from what I understand, it was almost impossible to watch. But uh, to do an after action of, oh. if you guys are down, do an after action of gun rights policy, just because they aren't going to do much of it, period. And they don't do much of a job of even hyping it up. So, uh, you know, just to give some attention to the people who deserve credit for being there and getting a good presentation out amongst all the rough, I'll put it that way, right? The diamonds and the rough. Mm -hmm. um, but again, thanks everybody for joining us here. Uh, you talked about your podcast. We'll be back on next week. Oh, I guess I was going to say we're back on next week to talk about trends and future outlook, the rise of short form content. NFTs and content creators. That is interesting considering how, what a up and down that went. Um, and, and if that's over, right? Do people think that's really over? That's weird. Oh, what did I do? Change my alarm? It's a horrible alarm. It sounds like I'm in England or something. Isn't that horrible? Yeah. Uh, and then AI and automation and content creation, friend or foe. Speaking of horrible presentations at oh i'll shut up uh so ai nfts and short form i don't know if that's going to be a short show next week because i don't think clover's much into any of that stuff or mo much of it and deep, not deep into any of it but yeah uh, short form man yeah. short form is a touchy subject with me i've come to pretty much despise short form but for, we oh, can talk about that we can talk about why next week it'll be okay yeah for sure so uh, bring those con questions, comments, observations. And again, thanks for joining us. Thanks mostly to SheFires, but uh, y'all, you know, basically freeloaded off of SheFires. So thank you for pulling the weight of all of them freeloaders. Thank you. Um, I'm finding my commercial. Here it is. Gearwebsites.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches. Every Friday is free patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at gearwebsites.com.